Today I was thinking back about when I finally decided to sit down and begin writing my book. I had already created and I had already been living by my nine simple directives. I was figuring out what order specifically that I wanted to lay the nine directives out in the book in order to ensure the best possible result for the reader. But I also wanted to be 100% sure that I address what I call the four common roadblocks. You see, as you train people, you develop a trust with the people that you're training. And ultimately, over a period of time, they feel compelled to share with you all the different various excuses and reasons why they can't get their fitness back on track. And once I was able to get over my own hangups, my own problem that I had with listening to people that had self-defeating thoughts when they say I can't do something or I don't know how to do something or this thing, I just can't figure it out. And when they beat themselves up and they use these self-defeating thoughts, I used to have my own problem where I would stop them in their tracks and I'd say, what are you saying to me? You know, I'd say, what did you just say? You can't, you can't what? And I'd give them kind of a hard time and that used to be the way I'd handle things. I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand people that gave up on themselves and used excuses. But once I got over my own hangups about the whole thing, and I started listening to people and listening to what they're saying, I was able to compile a whole lot of valuable information. I basically listed out all the excuses that I was hearing over time and I sifted through it all and I managed to filter it all down into these four common roadblocks. And the funny thing is I couldn't figure out what I was going to call my book. I, I had all kinds of, you know, hours I had spent trying to list out different names and what I would call the book when I wrote it. And then one night I was woken up out of my sleep and the the word fit anyway just came into my mind. And the whole idea behind it was that I would show people all by laying out these nine directives, but also by addressing these four common roadblocks that regardless if they had these in their life, that they could become fit anyway. So this week I'll be taking you through what those four common roadblocks are specifically, ultimately so that you can start taking control of your life defeating these roadblocks, losing the weight, and taking back your health and fitness once and for all. Let's dive in. Welcome to episode 43 of the Ethan LaRock Show, where I'm here to help you get your fitness back on track at any age and regardless of your current fitness level, so you can spend more quality time with your families, have a brighter outlook on life, and finally find the true joy that life has to offer. I'm your host, that's right, Ethan LaRock. I'm happy to be hanging out with you again today, and I'm super excited to share this particular insight with you today. For those of you listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, thanks for listening, thanks for putting me in your ears, and thanks for sharing your reviews because it really does help me grow the channel. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for coming back again this week, and thanks for sharing your comments and feedback. As I look forward to hearing from you each week, and your thoughts and opinions really do matter to me. You guys are awesome. So yeah, this week, get ready to take down some notes once again, because I'll be sharing with you this perspective that I've come to through sifting through years and years of excuses that have been set my way. So I was able to filter all these things down, all these reasons and all these excuses that have been thrown my way over the years and filter them all down into what I call the four common roadblocks. And before we get into it, Like I share every week, my goal here is to help you get one step closer to where you want to be. And all those little steps will eventually add up. And part of that is giving away free stuff. If long-term weight loss is one of your goals, then you may be interested in my automate your plate eating approach. I created this unique eating approach that is based on psychology first, but also addresses your biology. And as a result, I lost 65 pounds in 13 weeks and that was more than 15 years ago. The benefits of this eating approach, the main one, is that you can eat more frequently than you ever have before, all with less time and effort spent. It spells everything out clearly for you. Now those that have tried it and followed it correctly have had amazing results. So yes, I put together a free step-by-step checklist, I call it the Automate Your Plate Checklist, that you can use as your own quick start guide for automating your plate so you can begin using it and benefiting from it right away. It's super simple and easy to follow. You can get yourself a copy by going to ethanlarock.com forward slash automate. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can grab yourself a copy by clicking on the link below. Download your own copy, give it a try, 
and be sure to let me know how it works out for you. And feel free to drop me a line anytime if you have any questions about it because I'm always happy to help. So I'm gonna jump right into it and describe to you what the four common roadblocks are. And I'm also gonna share some insight on how you can best deal with these roadblocks. Now I have an entire chapter in my book that is dedicated to these four common roadblocks that shares some more very in-depth perspective on each. But besides that, each chapter in the book is laid out in order to keep coming back to these four common roadblocks, ensuring that they are thoroughly addressed in each chapter. So the first common roadblock is I don't know how. You know, in all the years that I've trained people, there's the various I don't know hows that were thrown my way. You know, I don't know how to train. I don't know the proper technique. I don't know how to cook. I don't know what proper nutrition consists of. I don't know what to do. And instead of doing something about it, you know, figuring out there's something I don't know how to do and then coming up with a way that you can figure it all out, they throw their hands up in the air and they say, Ethan, I just don't know how. I don't know how to do it. And they give up on themselves. And this one, this I don't know how, it's always left me dumbfounded. I've never understood it. Because personally, whenever I run into something in life, and I've always, I'm wired this way, I've always been wired this way, that I don't know how to do, I make it my life's mission to figure that thing out. You know, I, I come up with whatever it is that I don't know how to do and I spell it out. I come up with a plan that'll get me from not knowing what I'm supposed to do to be, be being excellent at it in the end. And it all comes down to what you want in life. You know, you, didn't, you need to know what your target is, what you want to come up with. So say you want to take up some new training routine or take some new class or whatever it might be. You need to kind of determine what it is you want to do, whether it be that or whether you want to get in charge of your nutrition and learn how to cook properly or learn what proper well-balanced nutrition consists of. It's all a matter of sitting down and just figuring it all out, stepping your way through it. What do you need to do? What kind of classes do you need to take? You know, what kind of exposure do you need to, to have in your life? Maybe go on YouTube and search out different things that you want to do in life and figure it out. Because not knowing how, especially in today's society, it's just not a good excuse for why you can't get to where you want to be. And this roadblock in particular, this very first roadblock, the roadblock of I don't know how, society has actually done a very good job at addressing it. So if you go on the internet or you go on YouTube, you'll see there's all kinds of videos, online courses, systems, all kinds of things that sh will show you exactly what you need to do. You know, the how-to information how to train properly, how to eat properly, how to plan your life, how to do all these things. The information really is out there. And thinking back again, like when I wrote my book, you know, I made sure that I peppered in the how all throughout every chapter. I started with how to visualize, how to see where you want to be at the end, you know, how to take a clear picture of where you are today so that you have a starting point that you can measure yourself against how to properly get some closure before you begin your journey of weight loss. Some certain things that I suggest you do, you know, a little ritual that I came up with before you even begin your journey so that you have a clear picture of where you are today before you even take your first step. And then the next thing, I show you exactly how to take charge of your eating, you know, your nutrition. I call it directive number three, automate your plate. And I take you through and I, sh I, I basically walk you through the whole process of what proper nutrition consists of. I encourage people to eat frequently instead of starving themselves. It's a little bit opposite to what's being taught out there today. And I do it all in a way that has automation built into it. And I actually show the specifics, the how to do that. And then the next thing I do, I show you how to select the best training method that works for you. And I put a bunch of criteria that you should address as you're going through the whole process of selecting what's best for you for training because it really needs to be congruent with who you are and then the next thing i show you is how to create your plan you know you have your goal that you established now what does that plan consist of to get you from where you are today in little chunks to where you want to be so after that after taking the reader through not knowing anything about health and fitness helping them determine a plan of where they want to be, right? A goal for where they want to be. Talking to them about what proper nutrition consists of and showing them that. Showing them how to select the best training method for them. 
showing them how to take it all now and wrap it into a plan, what I do is I take them through the next step, which is starting to address more of the psychology things. I start out by showing them how to deal with procrastination and how important it is that we do deal with procrastination. Then I jump in and I, I talk about how to defeat failure and how to deal with this whole psych psychological battle we have with not wanting to fail and fear of rejection and all these things. Then I jump in and I show them how to bring positivity into their lives. Because a lot of people, deep down inside, the root cause of why, why they can't get their stuff back on track, why they seem to gravitate towards high calorie foods, why they do a lot of self-sabotaging, is because they don't have enough positivity in their lives. There is a feeling of lack. So I take them through and I, I show them the how on that as well. So in the final chapter of the book, directive number nine, I show the reader how to transcend. And what I mean by that is when you've arrived at your destination, you've, you've achieved your goal, it's some wisdom and a method of how to keep everything that you've earned. And the best way to do that is through transcendence, through looking back at where you've been and by giving back, you know, giving back to your fellow humans so that you in turn are paying back to society. So when it comes to your own journey, your own weight loss journey or your own fitness journey, I encourage you that whenever you have an issue that comes up where you don't know how, that you make it your life's mission to write that down, write down that thing that you want to learn and then find out what it's going to take for you to learn it. Because like many things in life, it's very easy to get caught up in the overwhelm, the overwhelm of not knowing how to do something. And the only way to get over all this overwhelm is in little tiny bite sizes. You write down what the thing is that you want to learn. You come up with some ways you can do it, whether it be something formal like in a class or an online course, or maybe you find some little YouTube videos you can watch or some blogs that you can read or some books that you can read and just take it one little step at a time. You don't have to learn everything overnight. Just decide what that one thing is you want to learn, learn it, become good at it, and then move to the next thing you want to learn. That's really how easy it is. The second big common roadblock that I heard so many times is a roadblock of, I don't have time. You know, I don't have time, Ethan, to be training in the gym or working out several days out of the week or preparing some sort of crazy nutritional plan with fresh produce and all the prep that has to go into that. I just don't have time. Well, again, the truth of the matter is we all have the same amount of time in the day. We all have 24 hours in our day. That's whether you're the president of the United States, whether you're an astronaut going to the moon, you know, whether you're a rich business tycoon that's jet setting all over the planet, or whether you're just a janitor who's pushing a broom in some machine shop. You all have the exact same amount of time given to you. So why is it that some people with that same amount of time can be uber successful and achieve all their goals and other people just kind of flounder? Why is that? Well, that's exactly what I was asking myself when I developed my nine directives. And that's why in, chat, in directive number three, automate your plate through math, I show you how you can save 11 hours of your week each week. That's just by following the simple automate your plate eating approach. And by limiting your training sessions to an hour or less, like I teach in directive number five, to train should never be a pain. Again, I show you how you can save time in your life, how it doesn't have to consume your entire life to take back your health and fitness. And I tie it all together again in directive number five, you need to run your life or life will run you. In that directive, I show you how to bring it all together how to chunk out your days, how to plan your life, how to bring in the proper nutrition, bring in the training, and do it all in a very time sensitive way so that you will have time to do all those things you need to do. Not only to take back your health and fitness, but to get some control over your entire life. And when it all comes down to it, my suggestion to you is instead of saying, I don't have time and using that as your excuse for why you can't get your health and fitness back, is that you take control over your life. Take control over your time and the best way to do that is to start tracking how you're spending your time right now. What are you doing with those 24 valuable hours in your day? 
And my suggestion is that you start writing things down. Start analyzing what you're doing with your time. And then all those things that you're doing that are wasting your time, replace those with value added things. Replace those with training sessions, replace those with time to cook your meals, replace those with education, learning more about these things that you didn't know how to do. I'm telling you, it's much more valuable to you to take charge and do something about things in your life than throw your hands up in the air and say, oh, this roadblock stopping me from getting where I want to go. And I don't have time isn't any different. You can fix this. You can find the time in your life. Even though right now, seemingly, you don't think you don't know how you can do it. Again, that's overwhelm. And overwhelm, you can eliminate overwhelm just by starting to write some things down and chunking things out a little bit at a time and figuring your way out of the whole puzzle. Because that's exactly what I did. The third common roadblock that I heard all the time, more times than I wanted to hear, was I can't afford it. I can't afford to work out in a gym. I can't afford to have a personal trainer. I can't afford to eat nutritious meals with fresh produce and fresh meat. That's way too expensive. I can't afford it. And so many times I would just, I used to get really frustrated with this one. Cause I just, I'd be looking at this person who's got like high blood pressure, cholesterol issues, just on the border of type two diabetes. And they're looking at me and saying, I can't afford it. I'd want to jump up and down and scream and say, you can't afford not to take charge of your health and fitness. And I go deep on it in my book. I talk about all that and my experiences I've had with that one because I really had a problem with it. But in chapter number three, directive number three, automate your plate again, I go in and I show the reader how they can save $2,028 per year just by eating properly, by eating good nutrition. And I have math that I present that takes the reader through that and shows them exactly how I came up with that figure. And in directive number four, again, to train should never be a pain in that chapter where I talk about training, I show the reader that you can actually, it's up to you what you have for your budget. You can start out with nothing, zero, by just going for walks and going outside or doing military workouts. And yes, I also show them, I encourage them to invest a little bit of money in taking care of their fitness. You know, joining a gym or a class or whatever it might be, it's really just more for convenience, you know, so that you're not out in the elements, so that you can be a little more efficient in what you're doing. And I always encourage, so you build your muscles up, so you make your muscles bigger. So while you're sitting or you're sleeping, you're burning more calories than the average person. Everything's in your favor that way. The truth of the matter is, it can be extremely affordable to eat correctly, to get your training in and all the things you need to do in order to take back your health and fitness. It doesn't have to be expensive. And to throw your hands up in your air, in the air and say, I can't afford it, and using that as a roadblock to stop you from getting where you need to be, it just doesn't need to be that way. You can fix this. It's all a matter of perspective. You need to look at things and decide how important it is to you. How important is your health and fitness to you? Is it worth it? You know, think about all the things you spend your money on in your life going out for dinners, drinking alcohol, going on vacations, buying cars, buying cars. You buy an automobile, this beautiful shiny car, you park it in your driveway, and after about a week, all that excitement wears off, and all you really use that car for is from driving from your driveway and parking it in the parking lot where you work, and then getting into it at your work and driving it and maybe going to the grocery store or picking up your kids, driving them to their whatever they need to be doing and driving it back home. And that beautiful car just sits there all nice and shiny. It sits in your driveway and it just waits for you to get back in and do the whole thing again. And you spend probably half a year's salary on that car. And you don't even think twice about it. And then we're not even gonna talk about insurance and gasoline and all the other things. Yet, you don't sit back and ponder, hmm, should I have a car? Should I really be driving a car? Can I afford it? No, most people don't. But when it comes to their health and fitness, they're just, they can't, they can't fathom why they would wanna spend any money on that. And it always used to irk me because I just, I never understood it. I, because I see your health and fitness 
as being the number one most important thing that you have. You know, if you don't take control of your health and fitness, you don't have a very good foundation for all the other things you need to be doing in life. So I'll get off my soapbox. I think you get what I'm getting at. You really can't afford it. It's all up to you to figure it out. And the fourth common roadblock is this whole idea of I'm too old or I'm too out of shape in order to get my fitness back. This applies to any of us that are getting up there in age. You know, maybe we're getting older or those of us that have gained tons of weight over a long period of time. And we can't even fathom the idea of doing exercise. You know, maybe we're limited in our mobility. We can't move very well. We can't breathe very well. We're on all kinds of medications. You know, we have high cholesterol. Maybe we're diabetic, whatever it might be. Maybe we have heart conditions, thyroid issues, whatever it might be. And we just can't seem to figure out, we can't picture ourselves anymore doing any kind of activity whatsoever. This one's really tough for many people and I can empathize. You know, I remember what it was like to be heavy. Like I've shared many times, I've been obese, not only once, but twice. And it was horrible. It was one of the worst things that I ever had to go through. I remember my knees, my ankles, my lower back, the pain that I was in. My joints were always killing me. Every couple of years, I would throw my lower back out to the point where I couldn't even get out of bed. And I remember just, if I even had to think about doing something like running where, my, where I'd actually be breathing, it was like my heart would be hurting because it would just, my body wasn't used to it. It was painful. So in directive number four in my book, To Train Should Never Be a Pain, I basically take the reader through and I spell it all out to them what they need to do if they are deciding to do some physical activity. Starting with safety, safety should be number one. But there's a bunch of little rules that I put in there to take the reader through and help them check the boxes as they go through this whole idea of taking back their life and getting some exercise in their life. And I also remember, now that I think of it, that I was super bold when I wrote the book. And I told the reader, you know what? You don't wanna do any physical activity? You know, you're too old, you're too out of shape? Well, guess what? Ignore directive number four, to train should never be a pain. Ignore it altogether. Just do the other eight directives in this book and you will still be able to lose weight. You'll still be able to get your health and fitness back. It'll take a little bit longer, for sure it will. It won't be as efficient. But you do not need to be putting yourself through crazy, crazy exercise in order to lose weight. That's the truth of it. That's the one thing about this channel that I can say is I'm not going to lead you down the wrong path. I'm not going to say things to you just so that you will buy something from me or so that you'll follow my way. I'm honest with you. If you can get in charge of your life, if you can get in charge of your plan for where you want to be and actually know what you want in your life, you know how much weight you want to lose, you know when you want to lose it by, you have an idea of how to get there, you take charge of your nutrition, right? You start eating correctly. Well, guess what? And you start following that plan and start holding yourself accountable to it, then you can lose weight. You can keep the weight off, but you have to stay true to it. You have to stay consistent in all your efforts when it comes to these things. And yes, I personally suggest that people exercise, that people make their muscles bigger, it gives them an advantage, they burn more calories, and also the cardio element of it, even simple walks every day. There's so many other benefits besides weight loss that you can get from doing a little bit of aerobic activity each day. And it doesn't mean you have to run or sprint or do some sort of crazy ballistic workout. The truth of the matter is, that you can definitely overcome all four of these common roadblocks. You can learn how, you can afford it, you can find time in your schedule, and you are not too old and you are not too out of shape to take back your health and fitness once and for all. And in the end, I hope this insight that I've shared with you today, these four common roadblocks made you think. Maybe give you, gave you a little bit of perspective on how you might be thinking of the reasons why maybe you're not doing anything about your health and fitness today. Maybe you've told yourself these things. Maybe you've said to yourself, ah, fitness is for other people. It's for the skinny people. I don't know how to do that. I wouldn't know what to do. You think I'm gonna sit down and read a cookbook and learn how to cook and, oh, forget it. It's just not my thing. Well, I'm telling you, you're selling yourself short. 
You can figure out how to do things. If you're telling yourself you can't afford it, well, I guess you just can't afford it, right? You've convinced yourself. <laughs> In all honesty, I'm, 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 I'm pleading with you to not believe that. You can't afford to take back your health and fitness. I encourage you to figure out a way to cook nutritiously because it will save you a ton of money. It's way more cost effective than eating out and way more cost effective than eating poor food, you know, processed food that you purchase at the grocery store. The price of that stuff is way jacked up and it's not good for you. It's full of sodium and all kinds of preservatives. It's just not good for the body. And you don't have to spend a ton of money on a gym or classes or whatever it might be. But I do encourage you, if you do plan to do some exercise, to figure out what, what you can afford. And don't be afraid to spend money on that. Maybe there's another area in your life where you could save money. You know, some sort of subscription that you have going on or whatever it might be that you can stop paying for that and maybe take that money each month and invest it in yourself. Invest it in your health and fitness. Invest it in your nutrition or invest it in your gym membership or whatever it is you want to do. Because it really is like everything in this life. It's all up to you. And you really can take back your time. You maybe feel overwhelmed right now in life. You may feel like everything's controlling you. Maybe it's your family. You have a family and, and, and they take up all your time or you know, you, you volunteering. Maybe you're a member of some sort of board. Maybe you're working all kinds of overtime at work to pay bills, whatever it might be. You are in control of all of it. You allow this to happen in your life and you can also take it all back. It's all up to you. You do have that power. And if you believe that you're too old or you're too out of shape and that you can't even start back to get your health and fitness back, again, it's just not the case. It's not true. You can do so many things to take back your health and fitness. It doesn't have to start with running a 100 meter dash down the road. It could be all these other things I'm talking about. And if addressing your diet is one of the actions that you need to take, that you plan to do to take charge of your life, to lose the weight and keep it off, then I encourage you to take full advantage and download my free Automate Your Plate Checklist. The Automate Your Plate Checklist takes everything that I teach in the book and in the online course on directive number three, automate your plate. And it steps you through the whole process one little step at a time. It takes everything that I teach and it simplifies it all down into a single page cheat sheet showing you how you can automate your plate. It just cuts out all the confusion and provides a paint by numbers, step by step approach to automating your plate. You can get yourself a copy by going to ethanlarock.com forward slash automate. And if you're watching on YouTube, there is a link down below. You can click on it and you can get it there. And before we go, of the four common roadblocks that I just shared with you, which one of these roadblocks, or maybe more than one, are holding you back right now? Feel free to leave me some comments as I truly am interested in these struggles that you may be going through. I may jump in and leave a reply, or I may create a video that goes in depth on some of these challenges that you might be having so that I can help you and so that I can help everybody that's watching inside this community. Ultimately today, I hope you walk away feeling empowered, feeling like you've got some control again over your health and fitness, that you can figure these things out, that you can step your way through in little tiny baby steps and get to where you want to be. I want you to know that regardless of the excuse, regardless of the reason, you know, you don't know how, you can't afford it, you don't have time, you're too old, you're too out of shape. Regardless of all those excuses, you don't know how to cook, whatever it might be, you too can be fit anyway. Have a blessed remainder of the day and the week. And until we meet again, stay healthy, be happy, and live your life with intention every single day.